Hello and welcome to the Travel Nurse and Allies Life podcast. This podcast is brought to you by TravCon. And TravCon, of course, is the huge conference that goes on every year in Vegas for healthcare travelers. Last time we had about 1,500 travelers show up. This year, I think we're already set to break that record. So please come join, join us in Vegas. But also, we have tons of other education, and one of them is this podcast. I'm Laura Latimer. I am the host of this segment of the podcast, which is all about the industry trends. And a lot of it is about the technology and the future of the industry. Where are we headed to? And today we have a really awesome guest. This is Andy Byrne. And he has been in this industry for nine years now, which actually, that's pretty much the exact same time I've been in the industry. That's cool. Um, so nine years, and he's working on this very special project that Fusion has been working on for the last two years, and this is called the Fusion Marketplace Project. So, Andy, hello. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, hello, everyone. Welcome, um, and thank you, Laura. Yeah, absolutely. So, Andy, you have been in this industry for nine years, um, and that means you've probably done quite a few different things at Fusion, is my hunch. Uh, what are some different things you've done in your time in this industry? Yeah, definitely. I, I came to Fusion um, at, at a time when they were still very young and growing. So I think uh, a lot of us could probably relate to this, but you, you wear a lot of hats, right? As you're, uh, as you're sort of evolving with, with the company. Um, but I've started out in sales. I, I recruited. Um, I was in a couple of leadership positions in uh, kind of under our sales umbrella. Um, I have worked in a strategic role and now am our uh, director of operations. So definitely have worn some different hats. I get a chance to kind of um, use all of that experience in some way with the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So it's been a, a fun, you know, kind of bringing together, right, of all these different things. Yeah, absolutely. That's so great. Well, cool. Well, um, the good news for us getting to interview someone with that much experience is the cool insights we'll get to bring um, to all of us about where the industry is going. So the thing that you've been working on um, the most recently, and it sounds like for a little while now, is this Fusion Marketplace, which is going to be a big part of what we chat about today. because This is a new technology you guys are bringing to the industry and a new um a new idea, really, that we haven't seen too much of yet. So can you just generally introduce Fusion Marketplace and what it is? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think basically the in part of the reason why it's taken a while to get us here is because it started just sort of with an idea or a realization that, you know, we're in an industry um, that's, that's growing rapidly, has been growing rapidly, and, and in a lot of ways, it's kind of been like business in a box. And what I mean by that is, you know, there's always kind of been one way things have been done. And the, the idea and the concept of the marketplace is sort of to, to turn that thinking on its head and to do things a little bit differently, right? So um, I, think, I think when you look at our industry, right, to sort of explain what the marketplace is, is if you say, okay, a lot of times, the way jobs are sent out or the way agencies function or the way um, clients even function in a lot of ways, it's sort of geared towards putting, putting business first instead of putting people first. And what we wanted to do was just to say, hey, you know what, at the end of the day, the travelers, the healthcare professionals, they're the most important piece of this thing. But there aren't a lot of, there aren't a lot of outlets out there that, that truly put the travelers first. And I think that's what we're that's what we're trying to do. That's what we we see as the future. Um, and and I say that I guess, and, and we'll dive into all sorts of details, right? But um, I think a lot of times it's sort of a give and a take. Like you could be first here, but then we expect this, or or we'll need this over here. And and we just kind of wanted to scrap that. You know, we wanted to say, hey, let's put the travelers first. Let's put them in the driver's seat. And let's build tools for them. So that's sort of what this is, is a, a, a one-stop shop for travelers to be in control uh, of their own careers, their job searches, and, and more. Man, okay, that brought up so many questions in my head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I, lo I love it. I love it. Um, I'm going to take a step back real quick, just in case there's listeners who haven't even heard of Fusion as a whole company. And then we'll go mm -hmm. back to some of the questions that popped in my head with your awesome answer. 
But Fusion as a company, you guys are a staffing agency. So for healthcare travelers, you are, you're a company that has recruiters, that has contracts, you can get them into jobs. Um, there's one piece of Fusion. I think you work with, or you can tell us what specialties you work with it. Is it allied therapy and nursing? Is it just a few specialties? Yeah, so Fusion um, absolutely did start as a, a staffing agency. We we still we still do that. Um, we've been around for I want to say about eleven years. We've grown tremendously over that eleven years. Um, we do staff I think seven different departments. So we are in allied nursing, therapy, radiology, cardio, um, long term care, uh, home health. So so qu quite a few, you know. And as we've grown, we've we've tried to look at you know, what are other audiences that we could serve? Um, I think a lot of the, the growth has been from, you know, I guess our willingness to take risks, you know, and to try to innovate in some ways, but just not be afraid of chances if we really feel like they make sense. And if we really feel like they can help people, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's, when I kind of look back at Fusion's trajectory and our growth, I think that's what a lot of it has come down to is we preach internally that our mission or our goal is to improve the lives of the, everyone that we touch, right? The, the people that we work with, whether it be folks inside the office or the folks that we work with outside of our office. Um, and I think that mindset has helped to create kind of this environment where we welcome ideas and, and we try to find a new opportunity. And I think that sort of led us down this path too, you know, yeah. to, to this sort of marketplace platform. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. And now you, now you are staffing agency is one part. Now you have the marketplace that we'll talk about today. Are you guys also involved in, in MSP VMS world as well? It, we're sort of we're sort of beginning to open up the possibilities of an MSP. Okay. Um, we haven't necessarily jumped in with two feet, but it is something that we are working on and that we're sort of tentatively getting out there right now as well. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. All right. So awesome. And then maybe even just generally, um, what has your growth been from eleven years ago to now? You guys have become a very um, well-known staple in this industry like people definitely know fusion you have a great reputation in this industry you start of course from zero i know a lot of the people who are there as like the first 10 employees that's fun hearing about y'all's early days but um i don't know how you want to frame this but how much growth have you guys had since then yeah it's it's been uh, it's been substantial for sure um it's something, um, it's something that I think a lot of us are, are obviously very proud of, right? Because we have been here early on and we have seen that growth. Um, but like I said, we work, we work in um, seven different departments now. Obviously, we staff nationwide like so many other folks do. Um, yeah, but, uh, but in terms of growth, I think it's, it's, it's always a little bit um, tough to measure, right? Because where you're at today is different than where you're at tomorrow, where you were yesterday, especially, I think a lot of people could probably relate with COVID in, in the pandemic, right? Uh -oh. that we're yeah. Um, what a, what a roller coaster ride. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's, it's been incredible. And especially yeah. for the last six months to a year, even, you know, yeah, I was curious how COVID did. I think that's awesome. Well, let me just say congratulations. And also I think well-deserved you guys have worked so hard for that growth. Um, yeah. and I'm, I'm really, you know, yeah, proud of you, but that sounds weird, but congrats. It's a lot of work. I know that's so cool. All right, well, thank so you. let's take a step back to this marketplace so we can dive deeper into sure. this. This is the main topic. So the marketplace, you said you want to put travelers first. You want to put them in the driver, driver's seat. I'm ready to get into the details. So tell me specifically, what problems are you solving for the travelers with this idea of marketplace? Yeah, so, um, and jump in, because I feel like I could probably ramble here for an hour, but um, I, if, if we looked at it from a traveler's perspective, what's their experience generally like? In my opinion, I feel like there's a lot that's asked of a traveler without a lot being given to a traveler. So when we say we wanted to sort of turn that on its head, we want to give a lot to the traveler and not ask the traveler for a lot. And I think that manifests itself in, a whole bunch of different ways, right? So we can go into those um, specifics too. But I think transparency has been huge. Uh, 
And I think our history as an as a staffing agency has provided us with sort of a unique perspective because I think there are other folks who have tried to do some of these things. But I think what makes ours a little bit different in some ways is that perspective as, as an agency. So I think that's been really cool. But in terms of what is what does that look like and what does that mean, right? To have that transparency, to get a lot without having to give a lot, which is sort of a, a new concept. I think one example of that as it relates to transparency is um, as a traveler right now, let's say you're new to the industry. What does that journey look like for you? It's, it's I would imagine it's kind of frustrating. You could speak to it firsthand, right? But you do a lot of homework. You make a couple of phone calls or you throw some information out there. Maybe you throw some information out to the wrong spot and then there are 400 phone calls coming and you have to change your number and your email, right? Um, what we want to do is to be able to create a platform or to create sort of, like I said, this one-stop shop where a traveler has all of the tools that they need to manage their career whether it be a place to store documents, a place to communicate with recruiters or agencies, a place to search jobs, pay packages, compare benefits, filter and sort uh, in very unique ways that maybe they, they haven't had or maybe they've had to jump from site to site to be able to compare and contrast. We wanted to be able to give all of that information to a traveler without them having to do anything. So no commitments, you know, no, no phone calls, bombardments and all this kind of stuff. Um, and, and that's, that's what we've kind of built so far. Uh, and we have a, a lot of, I think, uh, exciting ideas that'll be also added on to that, um, really soon. That's oh, really great. So it sounds like a traveler does not need to give any, uh, details like contact details in order to use and browse this product. Is that correct? Right. So right. They do, yeah. yeah. So they do have the ability to create a profile. And I think as they uh, enter more information and as they sort of invest into the platform, the more quality information that they will get out. But what I really like about it is, again, if you have the traditional model, they're sort of like the the terms of their relationship to traveling or to an agency or to a recruiter are sort of dictated to them in a lot of ways mm -hmm. and this it's sort of like nothing happens unless they want it to happen they're they're in control you know and and, and that i think ties back to like i talked about being in the driver's seat right yeah. um yeah they if they don't want an agency to reach out to them but they want to see everything they can do that yeah that's that's so great so um, I have a question then of the technical side of this, which I think is amazing um, that you guys are trying to tackle this problem. But there's a problem there too, where transparency is one thing that is massive for the traveler. And transparency to me too means like you get, give enough details up front, so the traveler mm -hmm. does actually feel like they're in the driver's seat, and it doesn't feel like this clickbait thing that they're used to historically. So that's great. They actually have better data, which is better for everyone in the industry when the data is good data, right? They're like, okay, I understand what I could get paid in different areas, how many jobs are in different areas. Now there's a problem with this technology right now that has nothing to do with the traveler. It's about the speed of jobs opening and closing. Mm -hmm. And then also I think in your marketplace, other agencies will be giving you jobs. So you don't even have direct access to see what jobs are open and closed when it's other people's data. Now, uh, I'm just curious um, on that concept, like how you guys are navigating that, what your thoughts are, because it's one of the pain points I hear from travelers is this concept of being switched or I go to job boards and they're actually closed and that's so frustrating. Now there's a piece that there's nothing you can do about it because they literally could close in an hour, right? Mm -hmm. But then there's also some job boards that are out there today that uh, aren't really um, maybe trying as hard because there could be jobs that are up there from two months ago or something, which is extra frustrating. So in mm -hmm. this concept on the other side of it, where it's like logistically technology getting from this place to this place, mm -hmm. when it's not always clean data, which you know sure. and I know, <laughs> I'm wondering what your thoughts are around those kind of issues and how you guys are going about thinking through that to still have transparent data that's balanced with the struggles of clean data from facilities today. 
Yeah, that's a that's a great point. And, and honestly, it's a huge it is a huge challenge. And I think that um, it'll continue to be until we can make some maybe wholesale industry changes in, in the way that data flows. Um, I guess what we've tried to do is everything that we do, we try to be as detailed and we try to be as accurate as possible. And I think with jobs opening and closing, the feeds that we have for pulling that data, pulling that information onto our site is real time. So it's not even going to be a day old. Now, to your point, sometimes it is without us having any control over that, right? And I think um, as frustrating as that is, we still we still felt like there there was an opportunity to do it better. So we we wanted to do that, um, but with a lot of the features on the site. In, in say pay transparency being one example of that, we were, were really committed to that accuracy as much as we can be anyway, because we felt like, man, if, if, I was a, if I was a traveler, if that was me, I'd love to see pay packages, but I would probably rather not see pay than see pay that was wrong, mm-hmm. you know, because that's not helpful, right? That's more to your point, almost like a bait and switch. That's more misleading than it even is a benefit. Um, And that's an area where we put a ton of time and energy to make sure that, hey, if we're putting this on the site and if we're going to throw this out there as a tool and as a benefit to travelers, Mm -hmm. better be really, really close. You know, so um, I think that's another uh, that's another perspective or another place where sort of like our background in staffing has really helped us feel like we could pull apart that budget and those calculations in a really unique, unique way with that past experience that we have. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think that's so true because the, uh, all the travelers and staffing agencies listening to this can relate to how complicated the pay packages are. It's not just like a set thing and some travelers want things that are customizable and it can be confusing, but mm-hmm. you're right. Having that background of knowing legitimately how pay goes into different buckets and stuff and what truly can come out the other side can help you have better pay packages and get us closer, which is the goal right now, right? Closer and closer and closer and just improving and iterating. That's like how tech works. Never, yes. never perfect, but you keep growing. So that's it, awesome. Yeah, exactly. It's awesome to hear your dedication to that side of the industry to have good pay packages. Very cool. So uh, let's say I'm a traveler. I've never used Fusion before. And now it almost feels like there's two totally separate things. There's this thing called a fusion marketplace. There's a thing that's fusion staff. How are they, um, I guess, different from each other and how are they related to each other? Like do what, what I need to like go through the staffing door to talk to the recruiter and then the marketplace door fusion recruiters don't automatically get my information. How do they kind of work together and separately if I'm a traveler wanting to use one or both of those products? Yeah, I think, you know, I think Fusion Medical staffing still exists, right, as a, as a staffing agency. So from a traveler's perspective, I think that that sort of process or flow is basically the way that it has been. I think what's different, though, is on the marketplace, on this platform or on this other site, there isn't a there isn't like an automatic relationship with Fusion Medical staffing because we realized, again, If we want to be honest and be genuine about putting a traveler first and recognizing what a traveler wants, again, I don't think they want to be steered to a specific outcome. I think they want to control that destiny, their own destiny. So it, it, they really do operate as two separate things, you know? And so if you're a traveler and you're on the marketplace, you've got an option to contact Fusion or any of the other agencies that are on the site because we feel like it's really important that there isn't, again, there isn't direction or there isn't an outcome that's being dictated to a traveler, but it is truly their choice and that they have all of the options presented equally and and fairly. That's great. Very cool. Okay, so now I'm putting on my hat of a... (laughs) of a whole different person. So, you know, in this industry, you're navigating a lot of different players and a lot mm-hmm. of different uh, motivations and feelings and history. Uh, travelers are gonna love the transparency because of the history of not having it. Now on the other side, the marketplace is the place that other agencies could post their jobs to and have access to travelers that use the Fusion Marketplace. But historically, Agencies do not share their job information with other, their competitor, 
a staffing agency. They'd be like, you're just going to take my jobs. Why would I ever show you my jobs unless they're only from VMSs, right? Where everyone kind of has the same, but if they have direct contracts, I could see them easily saying, why would I give them to my competitor? You're going to take my job um, in their head, right? So I'm curious mm -hmm. too, on that side of it, how staffing agencies are going to feel comfortable using a product that's a marketplace that's not a third party marketplace. There's sure. a staffing company behind it. Sure. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, it's a great question. And I think um, I honestly think this would have been a much larger challenge maybe five years ago or even two years ago than it is today. I think a lot of a lot of the other agencies or other other folks in our industry have realized that things have changed too. And there are so many places to go to find jobs if that if that was your motivation, you know, um, I think that could be done very easily in, in a in, in a bunch of different places. I think what we've seen from other agencies is so much enthusiasm and so much positive energy about getting the details out there, about being able to show things that they maybe couldn't or you know weren't able to otherwise, that maybe that, that fear of showing jobs has been reduced so much that it's just become sort of over, overtaken with the, the energy and, and the optimism of this transparency, which has been really exciting and kind of refreshing, honestly, to, to see. Yeah. Um, because we, we've obviously talked to several agencies and so far every, everyone that we've spoken to has kind of shared in our, in our vision or in the, in the energy that we have towards this. Yeah. Um, which if, if I was honest, I think would, it was a bit of a surprise to me yeah. because of some of the things that you said. Um, but it's really refreshing to see that, you know, maybe our mindset isn't the only one that has changed here over, over the last few years. It's so refreshing to feel that. That's so cool to feel more collaboration between staffing agencies too. Uh, it's good for the traveler, you know, more data in one place is good. Um, on that note, you said something that the staffing agencies could not have shared it this transparency transparently themselves. So they're excited, excited about it. Mm -hmm. Is it because they don't actually have the technology themselves to put it up on their own? Like you guys have a special technology that can do different things to bill rates or do something. So they're like, oh, Fusion has a tech that I can't do on my own. Or did you mean something else when you said they were not able to do that on their own before? Yeah, I think, and I think that's definitely a part of it. I think the technology is a component and that manifests itself in different places. So an example is just details with a job. You know, a lot of times you go to a job board the way they exist right now and you can see, okay, this is my specialty and I see the city, you know, and, and beyond that, nothing's really guaranteed, you know, uh, and there are a lot of other details I think that you would need to know before you felt comfortable moving forward. Um, and, and then, and then you deal with what moving forward means, you know, what are the hoops you have to jump through in order to get that information. So on our site with the gross majority of jobs, we're able to display so much more detail, um, only just pay, um, and accurate pay, which I think is important again, but you know, your specialty, your shift, the computer charting system, potentially a patient population ratios, things that are a lot more granular that can really help a traveler than to narrow things down, which I, I think isn't yet commonplace for everybody to be able to show on every job. Mm -hmm. The other place that really shows up, which I think is big and is important is, um, again, and it, and it goes back to the challenge of data, but that's when you go to look at jobs and you're on a job board, right? You don't, you don't know what jobs are the same and what jobs are different all the time, you know, because obviously they get up different pay, but you don't always have the name of the facility. So you can't just say, oh, I know that's the same facility in the same city, you know? Um, but what we've been able to do is kind of clean and organize the data in such a way that the traveler can see very clearly, oh, that's the same job. And I have different agencies to choose from, or I have different options and I can drill down into them to see which one's the best fit for me mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, the benefits, the culture, sort of who they are as an agency, the pay, obviously, um, and some other things. So I think that's another example of sort of where that where that shows up that's not really common right now. Totally true. A lot of times uh, staffing agencies 
or yeah, I guess staff agencies don't want to share the facility public publicly. Now this is you being innovative and thinking future of what you see the industry going towards. But historically, there's this fear of like, well, other staffing agencies will take the job. And I think what you're noticing is the future is going somewhere else. It's going more transparency, transparently where um, travelers will pick based on other factors, their staffing agency. So that's great. Awesome. Yeah, and I so, think, uh -huh. and, and I, I was just gonna say, and I think the outcome of that fear, right? So then ends up equating to a more negative experience for the traveler. So, so again, I think when you weigh the cost and the benefit, the benefit is so great towards giving travelers that transparency and those options. Oh, that's so great. I agree with that. It's awesome. Okay. So I'm curious if we can uh, flash forward. What do you think? I know, like we were saying with technology, it's ever changing, ever growing. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to flash you forward five years for the fusion marketplace. Uh, so this is your like dream of what it can become. Now, there could be things that come up while you're building it that make it ultimately not work out that way because that's how tech goes. But I want to hear your dream and your vision, kind of almost if you had a, a little bit of a magic wand, but, you know, but also somewhat realistic. This is what you hope it becomes in the next five years as you guys keep iterating on it. What does that vision look like? Yeah, I wish I did have that magic wand, right? Because there's <laughs> the, the biggest challenge is probably speed. You know, how fast can these things happen? Um, but I think what it, I think generally what it looks like in five years is um, a, a lot, a lot more flushed out version of what it is. I think there's so many new tools that travelers still want. And one of the things that we try to do is always just listen and tr try to collect real feedback. So I think there's a lot that we can do for travelers that they're already asking for um, that we're building now. I think there are a lot of things, though, also that are maybe more off the beaten path that I think travelers would love to have, but they're so different. They don't even they, they wouldn't even know to ask for them. You know, and those are the things that really get me excited because those are the things can make the biggest impact sometimes, you know, they're, they're so different or they're, they're so maybe against the grain of the way the industry functions that they're not even on people's radar. So I, I really want to see those things come to fruition. Um, and I think those, those are probably maybe again, only looking out a year or, or less. So that's not that far, but I think the real vision for me five years from now is there's, there's so many opportunities out there right now. There's no shortage of jobs, but there is a shortage of healthcare professionals. So how do we create an industry that will reduce those barriers to entry for people to come in and help? Because at the end of the day, if you've got more travelers, if you've got happier travelers, if it's easier for them, I, I honestly think that equates to better patient care, that equates to more people getting help that they wouldn't otherwise have. And I think in a lot of ways, if that's not why you're in this business, then, then maybe, maybe there's an opportunity to look in the mirror and sort of check what your intentions are. You know, and I think that's really the good that can come out of a lot of these changes if we look further out you know, into the future. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. There's a really big picture thing to look at there of true lives you are helping in a really massive way mm -hmm. by doing these groundwork things to help travelers become travelers and yeah, ultimately see patients in places that need them. So I love that, you know, coming centered to that because it is so important to not get lost in the details and forget that big picture of like what we're all up to in this industry. We're in healthcare. That matters. Yeah. Uh, so I love that. <clears throat> now the stuff that's against the grain, I'm uh, guessing you don't want to share that yet, which is okay, but that might be a little bit behind the curtain. Is that right? But there's things yeah. Like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that is, that is correct. Um, I, I do think that, you know, with, with this conversation happening sort of as a ramp up to TravCon this year, mm -hmm. um, I think that there, there are even some of these things, hopefully, that if, if we're looking at the site or if we're looking at direction or vision, even by TravCon, hopefully some of, the, some of these things are, are out in public. So it'll be exciting, right, to see how fast, how fast these things can happen. How oh, cool. All right. We'll stay tuned then. I'm excited to see. All right. And then I just have um, 
Uh, two more questions. So one of them is about, this is a concept um, that's coming up with a lot of marketplaces where the marketplace will say, we have a, um, some of them call it a universal application. Although what they really mean is this application is just for use on our platform. And if you go to a different one, you have to use that. Some staffing agencies even say that they're like, it's your last, ditch the rest of the last application you'll ever need. But it's only if you only use that staffing agency. So there's a lot of marketing around one profile for them all. But what it really means is one profile for anyone that signs up for our service. But if you leave our service, you have to do another one. Yeah. Uh, now that that's not to criticize it. That's just like seeing the marketing and being like, there's not really one universal application. Um, so right now today we have different staffing agencies that have their own applications we have to fill out. And then there's marketplaces that might have one application that could go to several agencies. Those are the yep. two you kind of see. My question for you is more of a thought leader question of the future. Do you think we'll ever get to a place where there actually is one true universal application um, where staffing agencies will truly just take kind of a digital wallet type thing? And it might even look like different forms, you know, but they're just willing to take different forms of this digital wallet. Or do you think uh, that is not possible because of some industry knowledge you have and you're like, we just probably won't ever get to that place. What do you think? No, I, it's a great question. And, um, and I absolutely do think that it's possible. And I, and I absolutely do think that it will happen um, and that we're moving that direction. I think you hit the nail on the head in terms of kind of the way that it works now. And what makes me sort of optimistic about this is like we talked about the change in mindset over sort of controlling jobs and not wanting to share or not wanting to make things public. And I can't think of reasons that make sense to me why an application couldn't be accepted universally. Mm -hmm. So many agencies, platform marketplaces are drawing from such similar sort of like points of origin for the for the components of a profile or of an app that to me it's it's more about kind of con controlling things than it is about actually doing things with positive intent and for the for the right reasons for the future mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's absolutely something that uh we are driving towards right now and um, I absolutely think that that will improve the experience and reduce those barriers for a traveler. But I also think that that's going to end up being very helpful for agencies, you know, um, once we once we actually get there and people can realize, you know, what that experience truly means. Good. Well, I like your prediction. I hope you're correct. That would be <laughs> such a win for travelers. I know all of us are like, please, no more paperwork. Let us share it. So that's a great prediction. Now, the last one is uh, the last question I have for you. This one, literally, you can take any direction you want. You can talk about uh, specialties you think that are going to like skyrocket or technology that you really think is coming. Something that could change from the way the facilities relate to MSP. Something about bill rates. Literally, you can take it in any direction that is true for what you want to share. But this is where you get to share with all the listeners. Um, predictions you have for the industry for the next five years or even the next like 10, 20 years? Just where is this industry headed? What do you think when you think of it in the future? Yeah, that's a great question. This is one of my my favorite things, right? Because it's such a wild card. Um, nobody knows, but we all have our, our own, our own uh, perspective or our own opinion. Um, to me, I really feel like there's been so much focus on technology. And I think that that's right on right on the money that has to exist. There's been a lot of investment, time, energy, and focus on developing those tools. And I think that's absolutely important, especially in an industry where we're sort of already behind technologically. But what I really look for in the future is any anytime there is uh, sort of like a reaction or there's movement, then it seems like there's always a, a teeter-totter effect, right? We'll move one direction and come back. What I would look for is sort of a, an experience where there is a solution for everybody. So I, I don't think that it makes sense to me anyway to put everyone in one box, right? Different people have different needs and there needs to be something for everyone. And that to me means there has to be this really harmonious balance or blend of technology and relationships and information and communication 
And that balance maybe looks a little bit different from person to person, but it has to all exist in the same place together. And I know that's just kind of a loose concept, right? I don't think that it, that it makes sense to say this one thing will be the future or that one thing will be the future. I think that it has to have great components of a, a lot of different things in order for it to make sense for everybody. So I think that's something that I try to keep in mind as we're, you know, you look at today, then you look at a month from now, a year from now, and a decade from now, you try to always keep that perspective to say, you know, we don't want short-sighted solutions. We want to offer something that's going to be a benefit to people, you know, whether they're using it tomorrow or 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree with that. Absolutely. It'll be very nice for this industry to start thinking way in the future, uh, a little bit less instant gratification type of thing. And you guys are definitely leading the way in a lot of those things and great job continuing to take risks, continuing to think differently. And I'm sure you guys will have great success. So thank you so much, Andy, for joining us today. Everyone go check out Fusion Marketplace. Is there a website? Is it fusionmarketplace.com? Is it? That's it. You okay. said it. Fusionmarketplace.com. Think of it. Fusionmarketplace.com. Check it out. Definitely. I'm sure Andy would love your feedback. Um, Absolutely. Check it out. And you have any thoughts, please reach out to Andy. He's like one of the leaders leading the way. And I'm sure he wants that. So, um, but Until next time, uh, you guys have a wonderful week. Thanks for listening to Travel Nursing and Allied Life. You can find the full show notes below or at travcon.org. Please help us out by rating our podcast on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a comment below or email us at podcast at travcon.org.